all I can see are those sparkling green eyes. What the hell are you doing, Richard? You're just checking him out! <laughs> Hey internet, it's Jessica and welcome to Your Dry Delight. So this is a new uh, boys love or yaoi visual novel by RG Games, the creators of Chess of Blades and Red Embrace, and they emailed me about their new game. And uh, as you can see, it's kind of like a flapper, kind of 1920s kind of theme. It says here, as a historical romantic comedy, it focuses primarily on the lighthearted atmosphere related to prohibition. So this is going to be very interesting. Your Dry Delight also features a somewhat different approach to Roots. While technically there are two romance options, they tie together at the end of the story resulting in a single ending. So this is pretty cool. Um, there's like, th I think there's like three different endings, but yeah, they all, there's two Roots and they all like tie together. There are three characters that will feature in this. Um, so we'll see how different this will be compared to, um, you know, Red Embrace and Chess of Blades. I'm really excited about that. But before we get started, if you guys would like to check out the game yourself, I'll leave the link in the description. It's actually free to play, so you can download it either on Steam or itch.io uh, of your choice. So, let's begin. I don't know what kind of... Do, do I gotta give a 1920s voice? I don't even know like what kind of voices like they said in, in uh, 1920s. Anyway, ah, what a lovely night. What do you say we go get a drink? Boss, that's the fifth time you've used that joke today. Well, it's your fault for making such a hilarious face every time. I don't know who's talking, so I'll decide their voices as I go along. Richer, who is this young man with the blonde hair? My name is August Richer, and I'm a detective. Unfortunately, my parents thought a nice, classy name like James or John just wouldn't be good enough for me. Everyone thought it'd be downright hilarious just to call me July during my training. So I decided by going Richer would suit me better just fine. Oh, well, poor, poor guy. He had to change his name. <laughs> Ah, the other character, Leslie. Um, he seems like he has a delicate kind of voice, so maybe I'll like pitch him up a little bit. Hmm, Rich, I'm hungry. Didn't we just have dinner an hour ago, boss? But my appetite for good food is never sated, just like my appetite for justice. What do you say? Should we go get some cannoli? A fellow in Little Italy makes it really fantastic. So they have like definitions here, like in case you don't know like what certain words are, which I think is really cool. So Little Italy! Little Italians are similar to Chinatowns. They hold large immigrant population who preserve their culture, forming little pockets in the city that resembles another country. The Little Italy of Cleveland is, was established in the late 1800s. Today it is a popular historical district and home to a number of fine Italian restaurants and shops, which is so cool okay boss this is no time for a cannoli we've got a job to do oh Richard always oh, such a stick in the mud the fellow right here is my senior partner Leslie Clark he wears his hair long and has what you might call a girlish face so he's seen more of his fair share of teasing too oh, poor people they're so mean why are they so mean to these guys but somehow absolutely nothing seems to face him Case in point, he's worried about cannoli when we're supposed to be tracking down criminals. A true inspiration to us all. Alright, alright, let's get down to business. Run through the plan one last time, step by step. You're the new you're still a new solo assignment, so I want you to make sure you've got all the details down pat. Or you've just forgotten them because you fell asleep during our last meeting. How's that? Ahem. <clears throat> Don't worry about it. I clear my throat, strain my posture, and mentally pull up tonight's agenda. You and I splitting up the gathering information of Cleveland's illegal liquor business and enforced of Allstead. Okay, I hope you guys don't mind me like checking out like what each word means just so we can clarify to everyone watching and like what they mean. Cleveland, Ohio. By 1920, Cleveland, Ohio was the fifth largest city in America. During Prohibition, uh, speakeasy sprang in nearly everywhere in Cleveland. And the Volstead Act was poorly enforced. It was home to several infamous, mo infamous mobsters, both Italian and Jewish, such as Sh uh, Shondor, Burn and Mo Delazzi. I'm sorry, I'm saying all these names wrong. The famous agent Elliot Ness, renowned for bringing down Al Capone with his team and agents, The Untouchables, worked in Cleveland at the time and it was buried there in Lakeview. Hey, has anyone seen that movie, The Untouchables? That was a good one. The Volstead Act, uh, or the occasional Jess Volstead, is the informational name of the National Prohibition Act. This act enforced the 18th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which made the sale and production of alcohol illegal in the United States. The Volstead Act became law on October 28, 1919. 
2019. Prohibition was caused a major rise in organization and crime in America. As time went on, more and more people began to ignore the act, law enforcement included. Finally, on December 5, 1933, the 18th Amendment was repealed, and the American and America was free to drink once more. That's true. I think it was a matter of, like, people were just... Because, you know, alcohol inhibits, sometimes it inhibits people to do really stupid things and cause crime. It's, it's, it's just, like, kind of in the same length as, like, drugs and stuff like that. Um, but I felt like the way that they handled it, like, outright banning it was such a bad idea. Because, like, if you don't put any rules in place and you just be like, yep, no one's drinking it anymore. Yeah, people are gonna, like, break the law. That's why we have laws now. You have to be a certain age to drink. You have to have, like, certain, like, you know, um forms and licenses to make the alcohol and stuff like that so it, it's much better now obviously but like the way that they handled it back then was really bad i'm heading to the speakeasy on ness avenue you're meeting with an fbi contract to scoop out some warehouses leslie nods with his eyes closed swiveling a little in his chair damn it he better not be dozing off again for tonight my cover is jack fawn and i work in the city government Yes, so you can say your job is helping civilians, and it'll be technically true. Because you're terrible at lying. Well, why'd you get into the line of work again? I heard the agency needed detectives who didn't spend their payroll hours hunting for food. Richer, how cruel! With a theatrical gasp, Leslie spins rapidly around in his office chair, like my driver Mark just sent him into an orbit. Sometimes I wonder about what bizarre twist of fate landed us together. Hurtful remarks aside, it sounds like you're all prepared. We'll meet back here tomorrow morning to trade reports, drink coffee, eat donuts. Is it my imagination or is he drooling a little? <laughs> ah, and decide our next plan of action, of course. Understood? Loud and clear, boss. I gave him a lazy salute before turning towards the door, smoothing out my vest. Richer. Hmm? Be careful, please. Watch yourself, stay alert, and don't do anything I wouldn't do. Like what, skipping out on the job to get cannoli? I'm serious, Richard! You're my partner, I don't want you to be turned into Swiss cheese by Tommy Gunn or something like that. He would use a food metaphor. So promise me you'll be careful, right? I worry about you whether you're off solo. I worry about you too, don't worry, I've got- Oh, I don't know who to romance first, like, I don't even know, like, the other characters yet, so I'm just gonna say, don't worry, I got this. I feel like a kid trying to get permission to leave home. He does know I've done other undercover missions, right? No need to worry about me, boss. This may come as a surprise, but I can't tie my own shoes, too. Oh, so you've been letting me tie them so I wouldn't get in my feelings hurt? Richard, I'm touched! He flashes me a playful grin, although it doesn't do much to mask the concern still in his voice. I know him well enough by now to see through his mask, for better or worse. Unless there's something else important, boss, I'm going to head out. All right. Leslie pushes himself off the chair, stepping over to get the door for me. I expect great things from your report tomorrow. With any luck, we'll be well on our way to making Cleveland a boring town, drier than the Sahara Desert. Doesn't sound quite so encouraging when I put it that way, does it? Can't argue there. God bless America, land of the liquor free. See you in the morning, boss. I'm hell, detective. He reaches out to ruffle my hair fondly, as he does often. I stopped brushing it down a while ago. Leslie always likes to mess it up first thing anyway. We trade worry smiles, and with that, I head out into the cool night air. Next stop, Richard's first speakeasy. Argent Games present- Okay, this is the opening for the game. Okay, so far, I know, um very little about like the plot of this game but obviously we play as a detective and uh leslie is our partner there's another character i'm assuming we're gonna meet this dude definitely not a gangster <laughs> so i'm assuming that's where we're gonna go to the speed easy and we're gonna meet the next guy oh my god what's happening did you did you see those cgs jeez all right i'm excited to see like what will happen um so i guess like it's a matter of like whoever we fall in love with but then the ending will tie together you know what i mean so that's pretty cool password a gruff voice whispers to me to me through the slot door the basement of this dingy res restaurant echoes with the muffled sounds of swing music like it's haunted by some ghostly jazz band swordfish there's a long pause my informant definitely said the password was swordfish this isn't a setup, is it? If it is, heads will roll by the end tonight. Assuming mine's still... And it's right! 
The door swings open before I can finish that thought. Welcome, sir. Please enjoy your night. Thanks, I- I'm sure I will. I step past the tall door- door doorman and into the loudest place I've ever seen or heard. Smoke everywhere, deafening music, giant gaggle of dancers, loitering hophead, flappers posing in their risque skirts, drunk saps trying to impress them. Flappers were the dancers! Flappers are famous symbols of a roaring 20s, in the time when women were traditionally expected to wear long dresses and be morally conservative, the flapper, a woman with bobbed hair and short skirt and a bold attitude, was a backish, backlash against the formal society. That's right. If you guys seen like the, the cartoon Betty Boop, she was essentially a flapper, what that was, so, you know. And saps, a sap is an idiot or a foolish person. It is a shortened version of sap skull, an insult that takes the name from sap wood, soft wood. All this laughter and cheer makes you wonder what's so criminal about it all. But I guess it's not my job to ask those kinds of questions. Can I just say I really like like jazz music, so this is like really cool, like that this is like the theme of uh, this game. After I wander around a little bit, weaving through the hooch holding crowd, I end up ho loitering by the bar. The bartender's staring at me. I raise a brow at him, offering a silent defense. What, isn't it normal to come to the speakeasy and not order any liquor? No? His face is definitely saying no. Alright, I'd like to order one of the special. The special comes out of Ed's bathtub, mister. Ew! <laughs> the bartender bells out a laugh when I freeze in horror. Oh boy, don't worry, it adds to the taste. I sure bet it does. Still laughing, he uncorks the bottle and pours me a glass of clear liquid, su stuffing a lime slice into the rim. It's like putting on a fancy bow on a pile of horse crap, but I guess I should appreciate the effort. I left the glass, taking a cautious sip. No, if we spit it out, they're gonna think something's wrong with us, right? No, I'm gonna swallow it. Ugh! Jesus, that's bad. What does Ed do in his bathtub? <laughs> Actually, I don't wanna answer that. As I hold my glass of God knows what and lean back against the bar, my gaze wanders around the crowded parlor. The informant said this place is a key part of Cleveland's liquor business. Apparently, it's owned by a mobster types. And now that I think about it, those guys over there look a little rough around the edges. They're not drinking or dancing, just watching the Patreons. I casually scoot down the bar, getting close enough to overhear their conversation. It's so loud in here that I can't make out what's th what they're saying, but I managed to catch a few words. Damn Italians or turf? Them and the cops! Did I hear that right? They aren't part of the Italian mob? I wonder who owns this place, then. It must be a different gang. Some, some kind of deal. That'll work? Risky. I strain my ears as much as I can, sensing the conversation is about to get even more interesting. Just one or two hints, maybe a name? Come on! Only one drink for you tonight, my friend. A low, equivalent voice murmurs right in my ear. Oh, I have to give him a deep voice. Oh, it's this dude! Okay. The Colbert smirks at me when I whip my head around in surprise, offering a little wiggle of his finger in greeting. The tall is suited and well-groomed. He has an unusual refined look for him. Is he offering to buy me a drink? Hey, is there any better stuff? I'm just a normal lad who wants some alcohol. <laughs> I can manage another drink, but not another one of whatever this is. I jerk my chin towards the mild rat poison in my glass. You don't like it, really. I've been told that's one of the best drinks here. One or two more, and I promise it'll start growing on you. Not really. I like my tongue too much to put it through some more of Satan's mouthwash. My dry comment makes the stranger chuckle, and he flashes me a wink. Oh, so that's the problem. We'll never fear. I'll take good care of that tongue of yours. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Bartender! A fresh drink for the delicate-tongued man. And the usual for me. He waves the man behind the counter who hoopily nods. Oh great, I can't actually get drunk. Damn it, it's like this guy's here to just ruin my investigation. We'll get you fixed up with something that'll tickle your fancy, mister. Trailing off, the stranger raises one eyebrow at me expectantly. Ahem, <clears throat> Jack. Jack Vaughn. Jack? <laughs> Not the name I had picked for you, but I still liked it. Really? What name would you have picked? Ask me again after you've had a few more drinks. Um... <laughs> As if on cue, the bartender passes a glass towards me, um, and gently slides a steaming cup towards the companion. Is that coffee? Thank you, Arthur. Anytime! He throws the man beside me a wily grin. Can't shake the feeling that I'm the butt of some kind of inside joke, but maybe that's my detective paranoia talking. You don't drink, huh? 
I wouldn't call myself a Tita toddler, but I do like to stay sharp. What is that? Okay, someone who completely abstains from alcohol. Oh, so like a straight edge. Right. Well, drinking partner, since you've twisted me into this, who exactly am I toasting with again? My name is Meyer, and I'll endeavor to make sure you won't forget it. Um, is he flirting? <laughs> How the hell am I supposed to read this guy? If I didn't know better, I almost think he was trying to... Look, I am. Oh, hey, he's Jewish! Yes, he is! Uh, it's a toast that translates literally to life in Hebrew. Exclaiming some sort of toast, he clinks his cup against my glass. Lakayam. I mimic Meyer's pronounce. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm sorry if I'm not. I mimic Meyer's pronunciation, and we happily and he, when he happily nods in approval, we both sip our drinks. <laughs> not as bad as Ed Deluxe, but still feels like I swallowed gasoline cocktail. Why the puckered face, Jack? Not smooth enough for that tongue of yours. Meyer leans it closer, propping his elbow on the counter and gazing at my face. Well, if he is hell-bent on being all friendly, maybe I can pull some information out of him? I bet he knows something. He's got that kind of smug air. Yes, yes, woe is me and my delicate tongue. Really, where did they get this stuff? Is it all home-brewed? Surely there's a big seller. Of course, why the biggest seller in town, no less. So, he does know. Now I just have to. More importantly, why don't you tell me a little bit more about yourself? Or a lot more. I promise I won't mind. Alright, play it cool, Richard. Can't rush this, or he'll catch on. Nobody's special, really. I help keep civilians safe, serve the city and all that. Mm-hmm. His smirk deepens for some reason. Just another average fella here to relax after a hard day's work. Mm-hmm. Hoping to take the edge off. Mm-hmm. Are you just gonna sit there and mm-hmm me all night? Or what? <laughs> well, I don't mean to be rude, but I have a sneaking suspicion that... You're lying. I'm just assuming this guy's the head boss around here so he would know. Impossible! He can already tell? Was Leslie right? Am I really that bad at this? Why don't you be honest with me, Jack? Be honest with you, I'm not- Meyer leans in even more, this time sneaking an arm around my shoulder and pulling me close. I saw it, trying to keep a hold of myself as his lips brush against my ear. He can't know. There's no way he knows. You're really a Simcha, aren't you? A Simcha? Confused, I steal a slight glance at Meyer, and his eyes glimmer back at me mischievously. A pimp, of course. <laughs> what? Oh, you can't fool me with that act, Jack. I saw you looking around earlier for any attractive girls. Settle as a train wreck. Lord have mercy, if I have to pretend to be a pimp, I think I'll just run out the door instead. Psh! <laughs> a little less spills out of Meyer's before I can bite back. Care to tell me what's so funny? <laughs> Just teasing, forgive me, I didn't mean any offense. Nor did I think you kind of nearly fainted on the spot, but I was quite ready to catch you. Alright, alright, you got me. I was just, you know, horrified that my good name might be ruined. Sh shook me up. Secretly, of course, I'm mostly only relieved that he actually didn't see through the lie. That was too close for comfort. Oh, naturally, an upstanding civil servant like you is obliged to maintain his sanity reputation, right? Bartender, another round for the gentleman, if you please! And that was how I got pulled into a night of drinking with my new companion. It soon grows clear that Meyer isn't going to let anything important slip. He manages to dodge all my questions like a pro boxer ducking punches. But I'm too invested to turn back. I know he'll know something. He knows. I know he knows something. But we're just dancing around the subject. As much as I hate to admit it, it's fun talking to him, so much that I nearly forget what I came here to do. The way he gives me all his attention is, well, flattering in a way. Who the hell is that guy? While we were banding back and forth, I noticed a sketchy looking man from earlier throwing glances towards us. Are they looking at me? Admire? Just trying to get the bartender's attention? I can't tell, but I've got a feeling we're being watched. If you don't mind, Jack, I have a question for you. He- an elbow nudges against my side, interrupting my thought. A question? Sure, I'm all ears. I turn my head back towards Meyer, only to see him already pressed close to my side. Our cheeks are nearly brushing together. You wouldn't happen to be looking for underground work, would you? My heart skips a beat. He's finally bringing it up? You could say that, more or less. Well, in that case, how about we make a deal? I'll trade you a little business information in exchange for something on your end. He whispers cons uh, conspiratorially to me, lips curled upward in a sly, daring smirk. Something, huh? What kind of something are we talking about here? Oh, I'm so glad you ask. 
His breath lightly tickles my cheek. For a second, my focus gets a little hazy. All I can see are those sparkling green eyes. What the hell are you doing, Richard? You're just checking him out! <laughs> my mind races through all the things that he might want from me. Things I normally never think of until... Bring me a case of casta cake. What the hell is that? Traditionally, it's cake from Sicily, Italy. It consists of sponge cake, ricotta cheese, and candied fruit, and various types of icing. However, the different type of uh, casta gained popularity in Cleveland, Ohio in the early 1920s. Okay, so he wants a slice of cake? Uh, a casta cake is a type from Frank's Bakery on the east side. Almost certainly non-kosher, but I won't tell you if you don't. I've heard they changed the recipe to something simply amazing, but let's just say I'm not very welcome to that neighborhood because he's Jewish, I'm assuming. Not exactly the offer I was expecting. A cake, right. I'll think about it, no promises. Playing coy, are we? Very well, I see how it is. He exhales a small laugh that brushes my skin again, sending a little tingle down the, na down the nape of my neck. Please think it over carefully, and if you decide to accept my offer, come back here tomorrow night. How does that sound, Jack? I hesitantly nod. Can this wise guy really be part of some criminal outfit, trading information for cakes? Perfect. It will be plenty worth your while, so keep that in mind. When he finally pulls back, I subconsciously exhale the breath I didn't know I've been holding. No matter how I look at it, he's acting a sweet on- He's acting sweet on me. Someone was a crush on or strong affection for them. See, I was right! The guy was flirting with him! Of course, it's not like anyone would notice crowded places as this is. Do you happen to have a favorite kind of drink? He casually throws me another question out, catching me off guard. I want to have it ready for you tomorrow night. That's awfully nice of you. Well, my favorite drink, I guess that'd be whiskey. I don't know, something sweet. Okay, uh, per for me personally, I actually don't drink alcohol. Just, I, I just don't like the taste of it, generally. I mean, wine's okay, but not really a fan of it. Whiskey... How about something sweet? Can we do that? Uh, something sweet to mask how bad it tastes? Mayor, Mayor stares at me in stunned silence. <laughs> what? What's with that look? <laughs> a small choked sound of leaks from his mouth. The kind they make when you stifle a laugh. He's razzing me again, isn't he? Teasing them, okay. <laughs> yeah, of course, something sweet, I understand. I'll make sure to take excellent care of both you and your fine palate. You're acting like I've already made up my... You're leaving? Mayor sips the last of his coffee and pushes it away, smoothing his hair back with one hand. I'm afraid so, Jack. I've got some business to attend to, but I hope I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, and tonight's drinks are on my treat, as a token of our thanks for your delightful company. Okay. <laughs> with a last knowing wink, May Meyer, Meyer, Meyer or Meyer, I don't know. Meyer steps away from the counter and slips into the crowd, mingling with the drunken seas. He left so suddenly. I wonder what business he's attending to. Well, never mind. I guess that concludes tonight's investigation. What a ride. Okay, guys. We're gonna end this first part right here. I hope you all enjoyed uh, your dry delight so far. Um, I'm, I'm more curious about the endings, like how everything's gonna tie. So I think I'm gonna go for Mayor's, like, route first. Meyer, Mayor, I don't know how to pronounce his name. I'm gonna go for his route first, and then I will go for Leslie, and then we'll get the, like, the final ending together. So this will be, like, one series rather than different routes. Just so everyone's clear about that. But yeah, so if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and let me know in the comments if you want me to continue this as a Let's Play series. And uh, be sure to check out Arjun Games if you want to download the game yourself for free. I leave a link in the description. And yeah, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so you know when I upload the next episode for your dry delight. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye! <laughs> what you do? <laughs> Damn it! Some of them don't get any credit they deserve, so today I'll be talking about five awesome video game sidekicks. Number five, Daxter, Jack and Dexter series. Daxter, the